Hello everyone. So in this video, we will be discussing the introductory topics of the engineering calculus one or the differential calculus. So in this video, we will be discussing two topics for today. We have functions and limits. But first, let's discuss first what is functions. So a variable y is said to be a function of another variable x if to every value of x there is a corresponding value of y. So in the simplest definition, it is a relationship between one variable, it's either the independent variable, and another variable or the dependent variable. So in symbol, um, y, this is the um, equivalent symbol of our function. y is equivalent to f of x. So meaning to say f of x can be replaced by the, the variable y. So let's move on to examples of a function. So we have here, if f of x is equivalent to x squared plus 2x plus 2, we need to find f of 2 f of 1 half and f of y plus 1. So from here, we need to find first this one using our function x squared plus 2x plus 2. So uh, let's try to solve this one first. So we have f of x is equivalent to x squared plus 2x plus 2. So since we are looking for the value of um, f of 2, so we need to replace all the values of x by 2. So here, you have 2 squared plus 2 times 2 plus 2. So as you can see, 2 squared, that is 4. 2 times 2, that is also 4, plus 2. So we have 8 plus 2, so that is 10. So this is now the result of the function. Next one is f of 1 half. So f of 1 half will just replace all the values of x by 1 half. So we have 1 half squared plus 2 times 1 half plus 2. So 1 half squared, that is equivalent to 1 fourth. And 2 times 1 half, that is just equivalent to 1 plus 2. So meaning to say 1 plus 2, that is 3 plus 1 fourth, that is 3.25 or that is equivalent to 13 over 4. Now we also have the last one which is f of y plus 1. So let's try to um, substitute that. So we have f of y plus 1. So we have y plus 1 squared plus 2 times y plus 1 plus 2. So, so as you can see from here, this is a square of a binomial, so we need to expand that one. So we have y squared plus 2y plus 1, and then this one, uh, let's have it distributive property. Let's use the distributive property. So we have 2y plus 2, and we have another plus 2 here, so you need to write it down. Now, simplifying and combining like terms, we have y squared, 2y plus 2y, so that is equivalent to 4y. Constants plus constant plus constant, so that is equivalent to 5. So this is now the final result of our function. Okay, next example we have here. F, if f of x is equivalent to 3x plus 4, we need to find f of 1 and f of y squared. So let's just substitute the value. Uh, let's try to solve f of 1 first. So let's uh, substitute all the values of x by 1. So we have 3 times 1 plus 4 all over 3 times 1 minus 4. So if you... Try to check this one, 3 plus 4, that is 7. 3 minus 4, that is negative 1. So, basically, this is just equivalent to negative 7. The next one is f of y squared. So, we have f of y squared, substituting all the values of x by y squared. So, we have 3 times y squared plus 4 all over 3 times y squared minus 4. So basically, that is just equivalent to 3y squared 
plus 4 all over 3y squared minus 4. So this is now our result since we cannot simplify the function anymore. Okay, I think that's it for the functions. Now let's move on to the theorems on limits. So there are a few theorems on limits. Let's start first with theorem 1, which is the constant. So as you can see from here, limit of C as X approaches to A. So you can read this one as X approaches to A. So where C is any constant number. So for example here, since this is already a constant number, you cannot do anything or you cannot replace anything to this since this has this does not involve a variable. So meaning to say, um, basically its result is just the constant number. So let's say for example, we have limit of seven as X approaches to three. Since um, our function does not involve a variable, so we can just simply put the constant number as our final answer. Next one, or the theorem 2, is limit of variable x. So as you can see, this is a variable x, and our limit is as x approaches to a. Meaning to say, x, when x is equivalent to a, um, we need to substitute all the values of x by our limit, which is a. So when you say limit of 2x as x approaches to um 5, let's say 5, so the, the result of this one is 2 times 5, so that is equivalent to 10. So that is just how uh, the, the limits of variable, of variable x. Next one, or the next theorems that we have, are theorem 3, sum of 2 or more functions. This is actually sum or difference of 2 or more functions. So... Um, you'll need to take the first function, you'll need to take the limit of the first function first, added by the limit of the second function, so you can already find the result of this one. So you need to remember that you need to find each limits first, so you can already have its result. Next one, or the theorem 4, is product of two or more functions. So we have, as you can see from here, we have two functions, the u of x and the v of x. So you need to find the limit of the first function, and you need to multiply that by the limit of the second function. So next one is theorem 5, or the quotient of two functions. So assuming we have... Um, function u of x and function v of x, you need to find the limit of the numerator first and then the limit of the denominator, provided that the limit of the denominator or the result of the denominator will not become zero or is not equal to zero. Okay, so when that happens, um, you'll need to find another way in order for you to find the limit of the function. The, the first thing that you just have to remember is you need to find the limit of the numerator first and then the limit of the denominator. And checking that the denominator is not equivalent to zero. So let's try to solve some examples related to limits. So we have here, evaluate the following. Limit of x squared plus 3x minus 5 as x approaches to 4. So we have... We need to replace all the values of x by 4. So we have 4 squared plus 3 times 4. Or let's just um, do this um, con uh, in a conventional way. So we have limit as x approaches to 4 of x squared plus the limit as x approaches to 4 of 3x and the limit as x approaches to 4 of a constant with this should be minus or subtraction 5. So as you can see from here, substituting our, uh, our limit, so we have 4 squared, and then this one, 3 times 4, and then the limit of a constant is still the constant, so you still have 5. 
Now, um, finding the result, 4 squared, that is 16, plus 3 times 4, that is 12, minus 5. 16 plus 12, that is 28, plus minus 5, that is 23. So this is now the limit of our function. Another example is, another example that we have is limit of x squared minus 4 all over x minus 2 as x approaches to 2. So this is now a quotient um, function. So we need to find the limit of our numerator first x squared minus 4, and the limit of our denominator, which is x minus 2. So if you substitute this, we have 2 squared minus 4, and then we have 2 minus 2. So as you can see, 2 squared, that is 4, minus 4, and 2 minus 2. As you can see, that is equivalent to 0 over 0, in which, in this case, we cannot take this answer because 0 over 0 is an indeterminate form. So, meaning to say, um, this is not yet the um, acceptable answer. So, as you can see from here, we can um, factor our numerator first. Again, if it's an indeterminate form, we need to find a way in order for us to do or we can cancel some terms. So since our numerator can still be factored, that is x minus 2 and x plus 2 all over our denominator, which is x minus 2. So as you can see from here, we can cancel some terms, x minus 2 on the numerator and x minus 2 on the denominator. So that gives us x plus 2. Now, limit of x plus, uh, of li limit of x plus 2 as x approaches to 2, that is basically equivalent to 2, 2 plus 2. So our limit of the function now is 4 not 0 over 0. Again, 0 over 0 answer is unacceptable. So, that's it for this example. Next one is, we have the last example. We have limits of 1 minus sine squared theta all over cos theta as theta approaches to pi over 2. So, it's, so we already use the theta, the variable theta. So, let's try to substitute um, the numerator first, sine squared pi over 2, and cos of pi over 2. And you have to remember, since the given um, theta here is not a degree, so you should um, have your calculator in a radian mode, not in degrees mode, because the given is radian. So if you try to calculate this one, this is mainly um, equivalent to 0 over 0, in which, in this case, we cannot accept that answer. So what we need to do is we need to find a way in order for us to have some cancellation of terms. So if you can recall, this one has an equivalent identity, trigonometric identity. So if you can recall sine squared theta plus cos squared theta, is equivalent to 1, right? Now, if you move sine squared theta here, we have 1 minus sine squared theta is just equivalent to cos squared theta. So, that being said, we can replace the numerator by cos squared theta and copy our denominator, which is cos theta. So we can cancel one term here and we can cancel here. So what we have left is cos theta. Now we can already substitute our limit. So our limit is cos pi over 2. And calculating this one, this is still equivalent to 0. So 0 alone is not the same as 0 over 0. So this one is our final answer. So I think that's it for this video. I hope you learned something and I'll see you on the next video. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Thank you everyone.